Hello, my name is Rafi Johns. I'm a graduate of University of Michigan. I got a job working for General Motors on the Parade of Progress. The parade started in 1936 to showcase the world of tomorrow. The man who sparked General Motors' original 1936 Parade of Progress was none other than Charles F. Kettering. Boss Kett was GM's resident genius and research vice president. He was the man behind inventions such as the first commercial electric self-starter, ethyl gasoline, the diesel-electric locomotive, and much more. Kettering hit on the parade idea one day as he strolled through GM's science and technology exhibit in the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. The thought suddenly struck him, why not take all this out to the people, let those who can't see it here see GM's exhibit in their own hometowns. From 1936 to 1939, the parade was moved from town to town in eight vehicles, called streamliners. In 1940, the parade was upgraded with more displays and 12 new vehicles, like this one. This was called a future liner. We also had a state-of-the-art tent with external supports called an aerodome. The tent would seat a thousand people with a stage where we entertained the crowd about the wonders of science and our underlying message, the goodness and greatness of mighty GM. When World War II started, the parade went into storage until 1953, when the vehicles were restyled, replacing the old all-glass top, a different paint scheme, new wheel covers, and air conditioning. When it started in 1954, I was one of 40 to 50 men from at least 30 different universities. My roommate's dad was the director of advertising at Buick and told me about the job. When I applied, they told me I needed to complete my army training first. So after I got out, it was back to GM for a job. One of our responsibilities was driving from town to town in parade form through the countryside led by GM convertibles and followed by a caravan of support vehicles. Once we arrived on the showground, there was a lot to do. We set up the huge tent and stage. We arranged the full array of shiny new GM cars near the tent, along with some dream cars, including the first Corvette as part of the presentation. After everything was set up, we'd head for the motel and find our steamer trunks in our rooms, but there was no time to rest yet. We had to change into our lecture suits and go back to the showgrounds. Each future liner had a different display. Some of the demonstrations included jet propulsion with a full-size cutaway Allison jet engine. We explained its parts and the theory behind jet propulsion. An All-American Soapbox Derby sponsored by Chevrolet. This was a display of a racer that had won one of the greatest boys' classics along with pictures of Derby Day in Akron, Ohio. Our American Crossroads. This animated display changed every ten minutes to show how communities would change in the future as a result of the automobile. This is the only exhibit that exists today, and it's still owned by General Motors. Diesel Power. This exhibit explained how diesel power connected the country from coast to coast. This is how we could bring future technology to the American people. This very future liner here held the Fisher Body Craftsman Guild display. This was GM's contribution to try and stimulate and spark interest in the youth of the day and involve them in ingenuity and creativity. The exhibit displayed sample models of the handiwork and skill of some of the prize-winning Craftsman Guild members. We would usually stay in a town for about a week, then pack up everything, take down the tent, and move on to the next town. The Parade of Progress lasted until 1956, when the technology we displayed in our show took over the American living room, television. Suddenly, the future liners were no longer the future. As the parade disbanded, the rigs were used for advertising and storage. Oral Roberts even used one as a cathedral cruiser. If you would like to know more about the Parade of Progress and the restoration of this future liner, you can purchase a DVD or VHS of The Miracle at Beaver Dam in our gift shop. Thanks for watching.